Every human being is born with kindness in their heart because they are created in the image and likeness of God. However, due to sin, we distance ourselves from the Lord and become vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy, who takes advantage of our weaknesses to cause destruction. But how can a person be used by Satan to hinder the work of God in their life? Firstly, by God's permission, as demons do nothing without the Lord's permission. Secondly, people who plot evil, harbor malice in their hearts, are used by the enemy to bring division, strife, lies, arguments, gossip. And in all of this, Satan remains disguised so that we do not realize he is behind it. Therefore, we need to ask God for discernment and spiritual protection so that when people come to us influenced by demons, we are shielded and strengthened against every attack of evil. Another very important thing you need to know is that your brother is not your enemy. See what the Bible says. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This means that when someone tries to harm or disadvantage you in any way, the devil is acting through their life. Therefore, from today onwards, have a spiritual perspective, and do not focus on the person, but on what is behind them. In the book of Genesis, we see the first case of fratricide committed between Cain and Abel. The Bible tells us that Satan planted envy in Cain's heart, leading him to kill his brother. So understand that people are not your enemies, but the enemy can use them. You need to be alert and vigilant, so that resentment and anger do not dominate your heart. The Bible says something very important about spiritual warfare. See what is written. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Apostle Peter warns us to stay vigilant and not to give the enemy any openings as he seeks to destroy us. Unfortunately, many churches and pastors have been teaching the flock how to receive God's blessings and achieve financial prosperity, but few have been teaching them to recognize the snares of the enemy. In this video, I will show you seven strategies that Satan uses against humans and how we can defend ourselves against them and achieve victory. But before we dive into that, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell icon to be notified by YouTube as soon as I post the next video. Alright, so let's get started. Firstly, the devil makes people doubt his existence. How often do we hear people say that the devil doesn't exist, that it's a human invention, that hell doesn't exist, or that hell is here on earth? This strategy of the enemy is working very well because as long as people believe he doesn't exist, they won't care about their way of living and can be easily manipulated. The enemy has caused so much destruction in families and the world, and when these things happen, we often attribute the blame solely to human nature. It's true that evil resides in the heart of man, but the devil takes advantage of these openings to implant malicious thoughts and ideas, aiming to cause more destruction. Secondly, the devil steals the word of God from hearts. Jesus told the parable of the sower who went out to sow. As he scattered the seed, some fell along the path, was trampled, and the birds came and devoured it. When interpreting this parable, Jesus explained that these birds symbolize the devil, who comes and snatches away the word from the heart so that the person may not believe and be saved. But what exactly is this word? It is the message of the gospel which reveals how sinful we are and emphasizes the urgent need for repentance. Jesus said that when this seed is trampled, ignored by people, the devil comes and takes it away because he knows that it has the power to transform the human heart. Thirdly, the devil sows tares among the wheat. In another parable, Jesus tells of how, while the servants of God were sleeping in the field, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. In other words, the children of the evil one infiltrated among the people of God. This illustrates that often the devil works from within. He uses people who appear to be believers, using words from the Bible, but are actually children of the evil one. They are in the churches, hold leadership positions, but belong to the kingdom of darkness and are there solely to cause quarrels and divisions. Notice in this parable that the enemy sowed the tares precisely when the children of God were asleep. In other words, while the church is spiritually inactive, the devil is at work. Fourthly, the devil oppresses people with illnesses. 
The Bible speaks of some individuals whom the devil oppressed with illness. This includes the case of Job, for example, the woman who walked bent over for 18 years due to a spirit of infirmity, and others with deafness and mental illnesses. It's important to note that not all illnesses are caused by demons, but there are many people who live oppressed by ailments brought about by the enemy's influence. When they surrender their lives to Jesus and repent of their sins, they are completely healed. We need spiritual discernment to avoid acting like Job's friends, who judged him and claimed that God was punishing him. However, as we read the book of Job, we discover that it was Satan behind all that suffering, and God allowed that tragedy so that the enemy would be defeated and Job would emerge stronger. Fifthly, the devil torments people who harbor resentment and grudges. Those who do not forgive lack peace. People who hold on to bitterness and resentment, besides living in torment, may become instruments of the devil to seek revenge or wish harm upon others. In Ephesians chapter 4, it is stated that when we become angry, we should seek God and forgive as quickly as possible to avoid giving a foothold to the devil. The Bible shows that the easiest way to release forgiveness to those who have hurt or harmed us is by recognizing how much we have been forgiven by God, even though we did not deserve it. Sixthly, the devil creates false teachings to deceive people. The Apostle Paul warns that in the last days, many will abandon the faith and follow deceitful spirits and demonic teachings. One of the prevalent falsehoods today is the notion that we all serve the same God and that all paths lead to God. However, these claims are significant lies that the devil has used to divert us from the only way, truth and life, which is Jesus Christ. Every day, Satan creates and propagates new religions and philosophies that preach peace and love as if they were alternative paths leading to the same destination. But the truth is that there are no other paths. See what is written. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. These paths invented by man are in fact shortcuts that, when they reach the end, lead to a great abyss. Therefore, there is only one way not to be deceived, knowing the truth found in Jesus. The more you read the Bible, pray, and listen to sermons, the better you will be able to identify and escape these lies of the devil. Seventhly, the devil attacks the minds of people. I know that many people suffer because they can't stop thinking about negative things. Usually this happens when they are facing struggles and temptations, but the Bible also says that the devil shoots fiery arrows into our minds. We often think these thoughts come from us, but they don't. Satan is the one putting lies in our heads, and we need to use faith to overcome this spiritual attack. He makes us believe that we are worthless, that we don't deserve God's forgiveness. He raises doubts about the Lord's promises for our lives, and he tells us that our problems have no solution. Moreover, he implants the idea in people's minds that they don't need to surrender their own desires to do God's will. In other words, the mind is a battlefield where the enemy works tirelessly to lead us away from the Lord. So stay very attentive to this. These are the seven ways that the devil uses to act in people's lives. But if we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we know that we are on the side of the victor, and he is willing to protect and help us. Therefore, don't forget, the devil may try, but the final decision on what to do will always be yours. So resist him and be obedient to the word of God, for the Lord promises to always be by your side. Amen? If you enjoyed this message, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. God bless you.